Hey there folks, uh, Mr. Finley here. Um, this is just a short video on the different types of stages uh, for the technical theater class. Whenever you're creating a work of art, the first thing that you do, if you're painting a picture, for example, is figure out the size and even shape of your canvas, because that's going to determine the sort of work of art that you can create. The same thing when you're designing for theater, you have to decide what sort of theater you're designing for. Is it a small 100 seat space like our theater at RTHS? Is it a big 2000 seat space uh, like DPAC? Um, and also what type of theater setup is it? So I'm gonna show you some examples. Um, as with all the stuff that we look at in this class, the pictures are taken from this book, um, uh, Theater, Theatrical Design and Production. Um, we'll be talking about that book a lot this year. Um, but the, the first type of theater that you might think of uh, as sort of the generic sort of theater is what we call a proscenium theater. This is where you have the audience on one side and the stage is on the other side, and they're separated by a sort of opening, a big square opening. We call that a proscenium arch. Um, so you have the audience on one side, then there's the proscenium. Sometimes there's a curtain that fills that proscenium, and on the other side, that is the stage where the set is. Um, sometimes the set uh, the stage rather extends a little bit beyond uh, the front of that proscenium. That's called the apron. If it does, sometimes that apron reaches out over the orchestra pit if it's a big theater. Um, showing now a sort of down view, a top view of a proscenium stage, you see uh, the audience would be there on the, the bottom side of that picture, and then there's the apron, and then there's the opening, the proscenium arch, and then you're looking at the stage. And you can see there's some space to the left and right of what we can see on stage. We call those the wings. Um, and then behind that, it says access to the shop, usually behind the back wall of the stage, is the shop where they build scenery and that sort of thing. In our case, it's the music room. Um, but the idea basically is that there's something sort of behind uh, there. Um, the Usually in a space, uh, if you look up, there's not a ceiling, there's what's called a grid. So this picture um, shows a sort of side view of a traditional proscenium stage. You see on the left there, there's the auditorium, and then you can see the opening, the proscenium arch, they're looking through to the stage, and the stage is there on the right. And then in many cases, the space above the stage is incredibly tall. It can be the full height or even twice the height of the stage itself, the proscenium itself, so that you can hang huge pieces of scenery. Uh, called flies, and then you just drop those in on stage for very fast, very large set changes. So a big theater like Deepak or Memorial has what's called a fly loft you see there, um, where whole pieces of scenery, a whole sets can be suspended in the air over the stage and just lowered in. And then above that is where you hang the lights, which is called the grid. Now in our space, we don't have a big fly system like that, but we do have a grid where we hang the lights. Um, in this next picture, you'll see the system by which they hang those big pieces of scenery. It's called a counterweight system. There's a weight off to the side of the stage, um, and that is controlled to raise or lower those uh, pieces of scenery. We don't have one of those, but that's what it looks like. Another important element of a stage uh, besides the actual architecture of the stage itself, are the curtains. Um, typically, these curtains, or what we might call drapes, are hung in various places to block what the audience can see and what they can't see. So that there may be areas that are backstage that we don't want the audience to see that aren't literally behind that back wall of the stage. Um, for example, in our space, we hang them usually all the way around to give us a little bit of a crossover space behind. This is called masking. And by hanging the curtains in different places, you can change where that masking lies. The really important point I want to make, um, and what is sort of the main point of this video, is that that standard proscenium theater, even though it's very common, um, and it's sort of what we're used to, to looking at because it resembles um, a movie theater or even a TV set with a sort of box that, that the drama takes place in, that is not the only type of theater. Um, and that there are other types of theaters that have a different sort of purpose and may be better suited for certain plays. This type is called a thrust. In a thrust, the stage sticks out um, and the audience is on 
three sides of it. Sometimes this is even called a three-quarter, which means that of the four sides, uh, three of them have audience on them. On the top there, you see the top-down view, and you see the audience on the three sides, and you can sort of see uh, that stage goes a little back a little further through an opening, sort of like a proscenium, so you can have a set that's further behind there. Um, and then down below, you see an illustration from the side that shows sort of what it would look like if someone was seating on that side. One of the great benefits of a thrust stage is that the audience is really close to the action. Um, if you have um, a thousand seat proscenium theater, some of those seats are going to be way back and they may be way up in the balcony. In a thrust, because the audience curves around the stage, even the furthest seat is going to be pretty close to the stage. So if you want a type of theater that is really intimate, that is really connected, that is, is, puts the audience close to the actors, um, a thrust theater is really, really great for that. Um, even closer than that is something called an arena stage or a theater in the round. And that's what this picture is. Um, here you, on the top, you see the top down view where the stage is in the middle, that square, and then the audience is on the sides. And you have those aisles coming in from the corners, which is how the actors get to the stage. And then down below, you see uh, the top view. Um, as if you were sort of sitting on one of those, you would have audience on either side and across from you, and then the lighting grid there is above. Um, this is really great because it gets the audience really close to the action. There are no seats that are far away. Um, and it sort of reminds you, because you're always looking sort of at the other theater goers, of the theater going experience. So if you're doing a non-realistic play or a theatrical play that isn't supposed to be realistic, this can be a great thing. It's challenging to design for, of course, because if you look at that top picture, if you put a big um, flat wall in the middle of that, you're going to block half the audience from seeing what's going on the other side of that. Um, so designing for an arena stage like this is really difficult. Um, but it can be worthwhile. We, um, the question, of course, is now which type of those is the theater at RTHS? The theater at RTHS is what's called a black box, which is, if you go into the theater, it's what it looks like, right? It's just a big black room. Um, and the grid that you hang the lighting instruments from covers the whole room. So we can set it up in different configurations. It can be a standard proscenium theater, it can be a thrust theater, it can be a theater in the round. Depending on where we hang the lights and where we set the audience platforms, it can be all of these spaces, which is sort of exciting. The one other piece of information I want to give you is what we call stage directions. Um, if the audience, if a, the director is sitting in the audience and they're facing the stage, say it's a typical proscenium, and the actor's on stage facing the audience. And the director says, move left. Well, this is a problem, right? Because the director's left facing the stage is different than the actor's left facing the audience. So if he says, move left, which direction is that? So from the very beginning of theater, we've come up with a way of saying what directions are on stage so that we can communicate with one another and know what left means and what right means, whether we're on stage or in the audience or elsewhere. Um, we call this stage left and stage right. And basically, it's always from the point of view of the actor on stage facing the audience. So stage left is left from the point of view of the actor standing on stage. So if you're an actor standing in the middle of the stage and you say, go stage left, you just move to your left. Now, of course, that's going to appear to be right from the audience. Um, but when you're on stage, stage left means left while you're facing the audience, and stage right means right when you're facing the audience. Similarly, we don't say toward the audience or away from the audience. We say upstage or downstage. And the reason for this is stages used to be slanted. They would go up. They were called the raked stage. So if you walked away from the audiences here, if you walked away from the audience, you were literally walking up the angle of the stage. You were walking upstage. If you walk toward the audience, you will literally be walking down stage. Raked stages are terrifying because they're slanted, and I always think I'm going to fall. I've performed in a couple of them. Um, but there's a picture here uh, that shows you those various different parts of the stage. There's center stage, and you could walk down center or up center. You could go left of center, and you could go down left or up left from there. Or you could go right of center and go up right and down right from there. Um, it's important because a designer may say, I need you to put in a tree uh, upstage left. And so you need to know, even if you're not an actor, 
the upstage left is that up left corner um, from the actor's point of view. So those are different types of stage architecture um, and directions for the stage uh, that you'll be making use of as you do your designs. Thanks.